Welcome. Today we are celebrating Ascension Sunday. Risen Savior, we want to rise up like you and live forever in heaven. By your grace, make this not only our dream, but our truth for always. So today as Ascension Sunday means that next week is Pentecost. And on Pentecost, we celebrate the Holy Spirit and it's traditional for us to wear red. So even though we won't be able to gather together in person, I still encourage you to wear red. In fact, take a picture of yourself uh, if you're able to, a selfie or have someone else take your picture and share it with us. Let us see that we are the body of Christ together. Just another announcement, we will be having our messenger coming out this week with some more information about the reopening process. I know many people have had that question, when will we come together? So look for that. And as always, if you have questions or comments, concerns, prayer requests, or just want to chat, give me a holler. I'd love to hear from you. Now let us begin our worship time. Our call to worship today comes from Psalm 47. Let us read responsively. Clap your hands, all peoples. For the Lord, the Most High, is to be feared. A great ruler over all the earth. Who subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. Who chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom God loved. God has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. For God is the ruler of all the earth. Sing praises with a song. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the people gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God, who is highly exalted. Our hymn for today comes from the... Hymnal number 454, Open My Eyes That I May See. We will sing verses 1 and 2. Let us join now in a time of confession. Let us pray together. Our Savior Jesus, even while we extol you as divine sovereign, 
whose authority is above all earthly power. We have failed to give you authority over even the smallest matters of our lives. We confess our arrogant, self-centered exercise of power over matters in our lives, in our church, and in our world. We desperately cling to our own power, failing to yield to your divine authority, wisdom, guidance, and love. Forgive us, we pray, for the harm we have done to others and to ourselves. In your mercy, save us, Lord. And now in a moment of silence, I invite you to lift up your own prayers of confession to God. Jesus said to his disciples before he ascended to God, Repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in my name to all nations. Repent then, followers of Christ, and allow Christ to transform your lives. Receive forgiveness in the name of the risen Savior. Amen. And now let us join our hearts and voices together as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And as we seek to open ourselves up to hear the word of God today, let us pray for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. We have been reading some of the apostles' letters that circulated among the early churches. Here is an excerpt from a letter sent to an early Christian community in Ephesus. We can imagine it being written for us as a community that needs prayers, that needs a spirit of wisdom. Ephesus, Ephesians 1, 15 to 23. Since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, this is the reason that I don't stop giving thanks to God for you when I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Sovereign of glory, will give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation that makes God known to you. I pray that the eyes of your heart will have enough light to see what is the hope of God's call, what is the richness of God's glorious inheritance among believers, And what is the overwhelming greatness of God's power that is working among us believers? This power is conferred by the energy of God's powerful strength. God's power was at work in Christ when God raised him from the dead and sat him at God's right side in the heavens, far above every ruler and authority and power and angelic power. Any power that might be named not only now but in the future. God put everything under Christ's feet and made him head of everything in the church, which is his body. His body, the church, is the fullness of Christ who fills everything in every way. May we be blessed as we hear and apply these words. 
Amen. Today we commemorate the moment when the disciples witnessed Jesus' leaving this physical world. He had spent some quality time with them, helping them understand more about their faith and the continued mission that they must now carry on in the world. He asked them to encourage people to a change of heart, to believe in hope and life and love that was his message on earth, as we often do when we take our leave from someone we love, Jesus blessed his followers. Hear now Luke 24, 44 to 53. Jesus said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. 
Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, this is what it is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And a change of heart and life for the forgiveness of sins must be preached in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses to these things. Look, I'm sending you what my Abba God promised, that you are to stay in the city until you have been furnished with heavenly power. He led them out as far as Bethany, where he lifted his hands and blessed them. As he blessed them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. They worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem overwhelmed with joy, and they were continuously in the temple praising God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Open our eyes, open our minds, open our hearts, oh God, to your message. Whatever way you deem appropriate, come in, for we are ready and willing to hear it. Amen. At the Emmaus retreats that I'm in, involved in with the youth through Southern Connecticut, one of the songs we like to sing is a praise song, Open the Eyes of My Heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, we sing. I want to see you high and lifted up. And then it goes on later to say, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. I feel a little bit silly, but all the times I have sang this song, I have never associated it with Ascension Sunday until now. Yet, it does make perfect sense for my Prayer for us today as we remember and commemorate the day Jesus left earth is that the eyes of our hearts will not only be opened, but that Jesus' power and love will be poured out upon us. Over the last couple of weeks, we have heard Jesus giving a promise to the disciples, telling them that he will be leaving them but that they won't be left alone. He also has given them his peace and his blessing. As he is ascended, he blesses them, and they return to Jerusalem with great joy, and they praise God in the temple. They have every reason to be sad, angry even, for first Jesus dies and they're devastated. Then he comes back only to leave again in 40 days. Yet because the eyes of their hearts have been opened through their remembering of his promise and the power of Jesus' love, they don't return with heavy hearts or with sadness, or with anger, but with joy. Yet they have not received the Holy Spirit. Jesus instructs the disciples to stay in the city. In a commentary I read by Jennifer Kuland, an assistant professor of religious studies, I was reminded that when we read Jesus' instructions, through our experiences of sheltering in place, new light is shed on the necessity of waiting. The disciples don't know how long it will be until they receive the full power of the Holy Spirit. They have no idea how long they will need to wait. 
Again, another reason that they could be sad or angry. Yet they go back and devote themselves to prayer. Waiting is rarely easy. And it can be even more difficult to endure when you do not know when the end will be. The beginning of Acts provides a glimpse into what is happening. The writer describes how the group has gathered, how they are unified, spending time praying and waiting. This time of preparation has equipped the disciples to go out and share the gospel, enabling the church to grow once they do receive the Holy Spirit. Much like we must wait until we can come together again, I think this time of waiting can be used to our and God's advantage. As we wait, we can be assured that just as Jesus' promises came to fruition with the disciples, they will come to fruition with us. Waiting doesn't mean, though, sitting around twiddling our thumbs doing nothing. To be the body of Christ as the church is to see the world through the eyes of Jesus, to see through the eyes of love, as Christ's body here on earth, we can create some of the same conditions of love that we did while Jesus was here on earth. We must first strive to continually open our hearts. Just as the disciples were that day of Jesus' ascension, we too need to spend time praying, reading, spending time in meditation, listening for what God has to say to us. Something I've noticed over the last couple weeks, now that it's becoming warmer, I've opened up the windows in the parsonage, and the birds seem so much clearer. I can hear their chirping. I can hear the rustling of the leaves. With much more clarity than I could previous, there's not as much noise pollution. It's also so beautiful to look around and everything looks so green. The beautiful tulips that we saw, the irises are coming out now. This time of waiting and this time of staying in our own spaces has allowed creation to be a little more full, which has helped me to see Christ in a new way as well. And so once our eyes are open, our hearts are open, we can then share that with others. Perhaps we can see ascension with Christ as an elevation or a heightening of our gratitude, of our commitment to do good in the world. When our level of love goes up, our level of appreciation and gratitude goes up, and that can help others. So I invite you to look around, to use all of your senses, look, hear, feel, see around you what you might have seen or heard before, but see it with a new sense of gratitude. And then, who do you think needs to hear that word of encouragement? Who needs an extra pair, prayer, an extra lifting up? if you will, reach out and share. During this season of Eastertide, we have reflected upon Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. We remember that though he has gone to heaven, he does not leave us alone. We are ready to receive the Holy Spirit, our comforter, 
and our guide. So I invite you to prepare your hearts to receive the Holy Spirit in a new way. This week, try not to be saddened or angry that we are apart from one another. Instead, celebrate the love, the power, the promise that is given to us because next week is Pentecost. The Spirit knows no bounds of time or space or distance. We will experience the Holy Spirit together next week, wherever we are. We will feel that pouring out of God. So praise God for this time of waiting, for I know that God has great things in store for us all. Amen. I think that if Jesus was giving directions to his disciples today, they may, might sound something like this. You will be my witnesses to the shoreline and the valley, to all of Connecticut and New York and to the ends of the earth. One way we become Christ's witnesses is through our giving. Some of our gifts are helping people in Jesus' name locally right here through the Clinton Food Pantry. Some of our giving reaches into our state through our connectional giving. Some of our gifts reach far into the world in the name of Jesus to support things like UMCOR. Thank you for your generous and joyful gifts so that we can continue to feel, fulfill Christ's call to be his witnesses and to be his hands and feet. Let us now share our offerings. Let us pray the prayer of dedication together. Bless our gifts, O Lord of all, that we might worship you with great joy and serve your people with great love. In Christ's name, amen. Let us continue to be in an attitude of prayer as we continue to keep our eyes and our hearts open to the word and power of God. We thank you, O oh God, for the wonder of Jesus' ascension, for the joy that the disciples felt and for the early ministry in which they shared with one another, in which they went out and blessed others. Oh God, we thank you that through his ascension, Jesus was set free to be Lord of all and is no longer bound to a particular place or time, but with us always. O oh God, we ask that you pierce the darkness, the sadness, the heavy-hearted. Replace that with your joy, your hope, your love. O oh God, this weekend we also celebrate Memorial Day, and so we give you great thanks for all those who have fought and died for us for those who were willing to leave all behind so that they could fight for our freedoms. Likewise, we remember those who are currently serving and are on active duty. Protect them, guide them, bring them wisdom and peace. 
and bring comfort to their families, O God. Bind us together through time and space and hear all the prayers we lift up now in the quiet of our hearts. We pray all of this to you, O oh God, as we continue to open ourselves up and wait for what is next for us. Amen. And now may God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you may grow in your knowledge of God. May Jesus continue to flood your hearts with light so that you may comprehend the confident hope that he gave to those he called. His promises do come true. And so be at peace. Wait for the Holy Spirit and be surrounded by God's love and grace this week. Amen. One day.